Altus Brands, Cass Creek Outdoors, Harmon Scents, and Quickie Quiver proudly present Uncle Bucky's Outdoor Adventures. I am just a simple man. Forty-four yard shot with the twenty gauge, copper solids, drop. Hey everybody, we're out here on successful Indiana youth hunt. I'd like to introduce you to my good friend Bill Harmon from Harmon Deer Sense. Hi everybody, glad to be here in Indiana turkey hunting this season. Well, we're heading out, Bill. You ready to go get an Indiana bird? I'm ready. I'm ready to get an Indiana bird. Well, we didn't get him one last time. We got close, but we're going to hope we get one this year. Well, this is our setup for the first afternoon hunt. We're hunting on the edge of a big alfalfa field. I've got a full strut decoy with a hen out in front, hopefully pulling in a tom coming off the river. Well, I notice a couple of birds up in a tree along the river. I zoom in and then I realize this is a mating pair of peregrine falcons. Well, this is our setup for day two. We're on the field edge in the blind and I've taken all my decoys to make it appear like there's a flock out in the field hoping to draw a tom into range. Well, around 9 a.m. on the second day, I notice a hen coming out of the woods about 40 yards to our right. We turn around, hoping she's dragging a tom with her, but that wait turned into disappointment as nothing else came out. I want to show you this shelf and this hook that fit into the hub of your pop-up blind, and they give you quick access to things that you need while you're hunting. They're made by Galena Outdoor Products. This is a simulated fly down that I do. What I do is I take a collapsible umbrella, cackle with a mouth call like a hen flying off the roost, and flap the umbrella in and out to make it sound like a hen flying down off the roost. Well, not much on the turkey front, but we do have some squirrel action. Bill, when did you start your deer scent company? Well, 1983. 83, so you've been in the business for 30... 31 years. 31 years, Harmon Scents have been out on the market. And Bill, what, what made you start the company? Well, I'd come back from overseas and I got a job uh, working for a government contractor and I wanted to go hunting and uh, so I bought me a bottle and uh, when I used it it wasn't pure it, or it didn't appear to be pure and uh, so I went and bought me another one and it it smelled the same way and I went and bought another brand and uh, my wife uh, asked me what was wrong and I said none of this is none of this smells like urine and uh, she said, well, why don't you just quit complaining and go make your own? And uh, so at that point, uh, I took what stocks I had and what bonds I had, and I uh, went and made me a new, uh, new company. That's amazing. I guess that's true. When Mama says something, you better do it, right? <laughs> well, well, as we're getting back from lunch, 
we look across the railroad tracks before we cross them, and right out there in the field, about 500 yards away, is a tom with a hen. So we take the back way in, sneak into the blind, and now we're trying to get the tom to come over to us. Well, we've watched this Tom for about half an hour. We've called to it, and he's just not going to leave that hen. He's just not coming to us. So we made the decision that I was going to attempt to get out, sneak down and along the riverbed, and try to get a shot at this Tom. Guys, I've been sitting here nearly 30 minutes, and uh, John went along the river trying to sneak down on the bank of the river, and it went in the woods right in there, and he's trying to sneak up on it, and I don't know if he, he's gonna get a shot on it or not, but the turkey, the tom went in the woods, the female went in the woods, the hen went in the woods, and uh, John, John ain't a bad hunter at all, so, you know, I don't know where, where, I mean, he may not even get a shot on it. It looks like there's a turkey out there. I don't have my, uh, don't have my binoculars on, uh, but guys, I've been looking out here for nearly 30 minutes, and John, it takes that long to creep, creep up along the bank, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just tough out there for me. But I don't know where he is. Don't know where the, where, you know, where, where John is. Wow, there's John, there's John right there. Okay, yep. He's running, so he must get it. Wait a minute, oh, he's got that fist up in the air. Did the gun do that? Yep. I didn't notice my adjustable stock came up two notches. You know what? I did a hot dang. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me let everybody see this right here, John. Hold on one second. This is worth seeing. It's it ain't that bad, but you know what? It's gonna hurt a day or two. Hey, I ain't gonna care. Oh man. Give me a minute to calm down and. Get settled down or I'll call I'll talk to you guys here a bit, okay? Well I'm back. I cleaned myself up as you saw when I walked up. I was a mess. That uh three and a half inch shell has got a little bite in. It's the first time I've used this gun and scoped it, but what had happened is a uh adjustable stock on my gun. As I was sneaking there, I bumped it and it's all the way closed as you can tell. And that put me about another two inches closer to the scope, and that's all it took. Man, it smacked me, but I was happy. I'd say it was 50, 55 yard shot. It was a pretty long poke, but I knew this gun with that three and a half inch shell that Mr. Bill gave me, the bazooka shell as we call them. I knew it would take him down and it, it knocked him down. It stoned him actually. He didn't move an ounce. Uh, as you saw, probably when I walked up, he was flopping a little bit, but that's just the nerves in him. But he, he dropped, I was happy. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I snuck out there because we had that turkey in the field as we showed you. We just, we couldn't, we couldn't get him to come over to us, and I knew what they do. They go out that 
river and they fly across the river and they go roost behind us. I thought, Bill said, you know, I can't do it, but go ahead and go for it. So I got out of the blind, snuck down around here where they couldn't see me, stayed down on the river bank. And I mean, low, I mean, I'm muddy and scratched up and briared up, but I got about, oh, 15 feet actually from the hen. I never even saw her. She actually made a little cluck and I saw her coming out of the, the grass. She was in front of me there. And then she turned around and bedded down. And I knew that Tom was gonna come back out to her. He came back out and I waited and waited and waited. It was about five minutes and I figured, I was actually figuring it was about a 45 yard shot, 40, 45 yard shot, but with a 12 gauge and a three and a half inch shell, you know, I'm positive we can make those shots and it made it. Um, I'm tickle pink. The bird's got about eight and a half, nine inch beard. Uh, gonna have to go get you know something done with my head and uh, here's a beard on it like I said it's a pretty decent beard it's got great hooks on it probably a little bit over an inch and a quarter maybe inch and three eighths it's probably a three-year-old bird pretty good weight to it uh, beautiful fan tail I'm tickled pink uh, not sure how good the footage came out but I know Bill tried his hardest and I appreciate you doing that Bill uh, hopefully we got a good enough footage you guys can see what actually happened but where I was going, it was no way for Bill to see what was going on. And that bird barely came out of the weeds. And I thought I had an open shot at him. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't take my cell phone with me. I just left it here. I was, I was afraid to fall in the river maybe and get it wet. So I appreciate it. But before I head out, you know, as always, I want to thank the good Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the life of this turkey, for all you do for us, Lord, for having Bill come up and having such a great friend and Bill to go out and share and have fun out here in your great outdoors. This is all on you. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor, and I thank you for all you do. Amen. Well, Bill, let's get back up in the blind. You know what? Uh, we could have birds come back in tonight, and maybe you get a shot at it. So, guys, we'll catch you back for a wrap-up. Well, we're going to make a, a bold move. We've gotten out of this blind, the elevated blind. Uh, the reason we've got it elevated is because we can see down the tracks and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to get in that blind right there and I'm going to do what I call turtling the blind. We're going to get underneath it, pick it up, and we're going to walk it out through the field down to where those birds were at yesterday and I, I stalked up on them. Um, it's kind of a bold move, but I think we're going to have to do it, so stay tuned. We switched blinds, but we've hunted all day, haven't we, Bill? Yeah. We had uh, two gobblers to our left, and we had one gobbler to our right. Uh, that was that was it. Uh, all active. Well, we did see one that crossed in front of us about 80 some odd yards at about six o'clock, but we couldn't make it out, and we couldn't call it in. But we we tried. Well, I know that's hunting, but you know it's. <laughs> When Bill comes up, I want him to get something. Unfortunately, he's 0 for 2 now up here in Indiana, so I'm going to have to make it up to him the next few times. But uh, we do appreciate you watching, everybody. As always, take care, be safe. You know, most of all, have fun. Yeah.